Christianity, a relationship with the God of this universe, offers something nothing else can offer. And we can receive the gift of eternal life and we can uh, know that we're going to heaven someday. Even though we don't know all about it, we can know that's pretty good and we're safe in Jesus. And we can know all that and miss out on some of the most wonderful things God has for us today in this life. You know, the moment we trust Jesus Christ as Savior, we become a child of God. We receive a divine nature and we are indwelt by the Spirit. This tent we live in becomes the dwelling place of God. And God's presence and God's power brings such wonderful blessings that the world is crying for and searching for in all kinds of ways, but can only be found in a relationship with God through Christ. And Brother Jim, on, the, on uh, September 7, 1996, he shared a uh, message on God's joy. Now, we, we, that last song was, is very powerful to me. And if you know the background of it, many of you have learned the history of it. Uh, um, the, this, this man was a businessman and a strong Christian. And uh, he lost uh, much of his wealth in the Chicago fires. Uh, but he had a wife and he had some daughters. And if a man has a family, he's blessed, isn't he? And so um, he had to go, they were going to go to England, and he couldn't go with them, right? He was going to join them later. And so the wife and the daughters sailed off to England, and uh, he remained to take care of some business. Well, he got a a wire um, from his wife, and it came from England, and it says, saved alone. That's all she could wrote. And the word was that the ship in which they were sailing, it it sunk. The wife was spared, but the daughters drowned and were lost. And so he rushed to New York, got on the first ship he could to go to, uh, to London. And he asked the captain, please, when we go over the spot where uh, the ship sank, would you let me know? And so he was able to go out and think about his daughters who had drowned in that icy grave. Uh, And he's the one, and on that occasion, moved him to write that wonderful song, It Is Well With My Soul. And that is the power of Christianity, the power of God in our lives, that in the midst of the most terrible loss and sorrow, that God's presence and God's power and God's love and God's grace can lift us up above those trials and tribulations. And we can have peace. And we can say, it is well with my soul. We can go so far even to say, I have a heart that is joyful. It's not based upon happenings. Like happiness is based upon a relationship with God and a confidence that he has promised and he'll keep what he has promised. And I'm safe in him. That's what we were designed for. Uh, Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. You can look at it in your own Bible if you want to. That'd be great. Uh, It's up there on the screen for us. May the God of hope. Hope in the Bible is... uh, It's not the way we use it commonly today. Uh, Hope, the way we use it today, has a a bunch of uncertainty with it. But hope for the Christian, as it's used in the scripture, is a certainty about our future. And it is wonderful. So Jesus Christ coming back for his church is called the blessed hope. It's not that, well, I hope he comes back. He is coming back. And everything that God has promised for us in him is we will be, it will be realized when we see him. And so uh, hope, God of hope, he, he is God of eternity. Before the worlds began, he had ever been. And when the world stops, he will forever be. And so God knows the future and today and yesterday all together. And, uh, and our future, he says, I know it. It's certain and it's good and we can be blessed in knowing that. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace 
as you trust him, as you believe him. This is, this is a wonderful prayer, isn't it, for Paul's praying for the church. God of hope, fill you. <laughs> how, how, you know, uh, think about Wednesday night, I'm thinking, um, everything's done and kids are going home and hardly anybody's here. Lisa comes by and says, do you have your key to the Mustang? I said, yes, honey. And she said, bye. And so she took my car and went home. You know what that means, husbands, right? There's no gas in that car, you know? And so I go out there and I thankfully made it to the gas station. I filled it up. Well, I don't know where your gas tank is out there, but I want to ask you about your spiritual tank today. Where, where, is your, where are you? Are you on quarter tank? Are you half full? Are you cl- close to empty? God wants you to be filled up with joy. E- joy, but this is a sorrowful occasion, isn't it? We've, we've said goodbye to somebody we love. God says you can be filled with joy. Don't sorrow as others who have no hope. We have a hope, a God of hope. And when we believe Him, when we trust Him, He fills us with joy and peace. In our prayer, I quoted that passage from Philippians chapter 4. Don't worry about anything. Worry about nothing. Don't be anxious. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, make your requests be made known unto God. With thanksgiving, let your prayer go to God. And he says when we give it to him, when we trust him, when we let him be God, then he gives us a peace that passes understanding. Now, you know, the way Christians um, remember another Christian's death is, is pretty unique as far as the world goes. If you look at certain cultures and certain religions and you go to a funeral, um, some of those are just, they don't have hope. And, and it's such sorrow and it's such grief and it's like there's no fix in this. It's broken and it can't be fixed. But that's not what the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that we have a Savior. We have a God who is able. A God of hope. And so... God's joy is not based upon our circumstances. You know, I, I, in um, Acts chapter 16, there's a story about Paul and Silas. Now, they were just being faithful and doing what God called them to do. And uh, they got, somebody didn't like the way they did it, what they did, and they got in trouble. And they got beaten and they got put in trouble and in, into in the jail, uh, in the prison, down in the dungeon, so to speak, and uh, and they were locked up, in like in stocks, and so they couldn't move. They were bleeding and sore, and and they had done nothing wrong. That makes it worse, doesn't it? Well, you know, I I can imagine myself down in that dark place, hurting and complaining to God, moaning to God feeling sorry for myself. I can imagine myself there. But when I read about Paul and Silas, you know what they're doing? They're singing. They're singing hymns, psalms to God. They're singing songs of praise. In that dark place, in that situation, God of hope has filled them with joy and peace. There's no price you can put on that, is it? You know, if there were no other reason, if, if, if this was only in this life, I'm going to argue with Paul a little bit here. If we could have that much in this life only, we would be blessed, wouldn't we? But we have far more. We would, be, we would have far more. So, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust him that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's a great prayer. And our brother spoke upon that. And he talked about joy here being of the same root as uh, grace or unmerited favor. That, that God is the source of it. It's the gift that he brings to us, that he provides for us. You know, uh, we can talk about our kids sometime or our wedding day or something. We had such joy. 
Well, the Bible's talking about a joy that that those might be associated with, but it's God who brings that real joy into our lives. And, uh, and just like His amazing grace, His unmerited favor. And uh, He loves us. And uh, turn to John chapter 15, if you've got your Bibles there. And uh, our brother took us there. You know... Um, I don't know how long John uh, Jim preached. I never got to hear him preach. But following this outline, I, it looks like about four hours. Y'all up to him. <laughs> John chapter 15. And look at verse 9. As the Father loved me, I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Isn't that wonderful? Your joy may be full. Now, the scripture here, and our brother brought this out rightly, that even though we're children of God, we're on our way to heaven and we have that secure, there are a lot of things on this earth with our relationship that we are not experiencing. Our spiritual gas tank might not be on full. It might be on a quarter. And God wants it to be filled. He wants it to be overflowing. That's what God wants. You know, God wants to uh, uh, pour out his blessings upon us in a way that we can't receive it. And that comes not just because I'm a child of God, but Jesus said it, become, it comes because we love God who loves us. And we demonstrate that love in a relationship, don't we? What's involved in a relationship? Well, you know, religion is so much easier. There's some religions that give you certain rules to follow, and that's, you know, okay, that's pretty easy. But relationships are hard, aren't they? I mean, they're very demanding, aren't they? I mean, you, you, for a relationship to be good, it, it involves giving. It, calls, it involves time. It, it involves sacrifice and all that. And God gives us an opportunity to enjoy a relationship with Him today. And that relationship results in joy. It doesn't result in guarantee of good health. It doesn't result in a guarantee of a full bank account. It doesn't um, guarantee children who always say yes sir and yes ma'am. It doesn't guarantee those things. You understand? That's the world we live in. We're talking about an internal blessing and gift that God wants you to enjoy. No matter what happens. I would like to see our world go on and uh, in my lifetime, my children's lifetime, I'd like them to see peace. Wouldn't you? Won't you want that for yourself and your family? Peace. But in the world, Jesus said, you'll have tribulation. And uh, Paul said, when we live godly in Christ Jesus, we'll suffer persecution. If we're not suffering that, then we're, we're, uh, we're in a little bubble here. It's not the norm for Christians around the world or in time past. But God says, the, my desire for you, in spite of all those things, is to experience joy. And that comes from walking with the Lord. That comes from knowing His will and applying it in our lives every day. You know... The, uh, the Corinthian believers, they, they, were, um, they give us a, 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 a term that I wish was never involved in Christianity at all. It's called carnality. Um, here were people who were delivered from the penalty of sin, given the Holy Spirit, and they were not living as Christians. And because of that... The Bible says that there was strife and division and all kinds of problems, relationship problems, because they were not following God's will and work in their life. You know, God wants you to have joy. God wants you to have peace. 
and we can have it no matter what but there is a responsibility that we have in this relationship God loved us first God's salvation is from the Lord it's not from us uh, God has reached all the way down to where we are and he's done everything we need but what God has done for us must be believed and it must be by God's grace applied and it must be used what did Jesus say? It is more blessed, which is talking about having joy, to give than to receive. You see, Jesus is talking about a way that we can experience this joy in our lives. And that comes from giving. And uh, you're in a church, Bill, if you don't come very often, you probably left because they talked about money all the time. We're not talking about money. We're talking about giving of ourselves and of our time to be a blessing to others, to honor God by loving other people. That's where joy comes in. Not putting me first and surrounding myself with some sort of protective cover so that nobody can hurt me, but reaching out, just like the Samaritan did. He didn't think about... What's this going to do to me? What's going to happen to me? He thought, what's well, going to happen to him if I don't help him? And that's the giving heart. And that's where we can experience God's joy and God's peace. When uh, there's a, a passage our brother used from Nehemiah in chapter 8. And he read the whole passage. And, um, but, but I just want to refer to um, verse 10. The, uh, the story is, is that the Jews had been in captivity to Babylon and God had delivered them and sent them home. And so these folks have come back to their land. Everything is not good, but they're back home where they belong. That's a neat thing, isn't it? Well, they spend a day and everybody gathers together and the scripture is read to them. And the Old Testament is read and is read and, the, and to the covenant that they enjoyed with God was blessings and cursings. <laughs> and they could see as it was read why their people had suffered. And they were filled with sorrow and grief and they began weeping at the word of God. And the leaders say, stop. No, this is not a day to be mourning. This is not a day. Uh, elsewhere it says you're... Your, your weeping is going to be turned to joy. And that's what they said. Go and, and, and feast. Enjoy this thing. This day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve. And then he says this wonderful thing. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Y'all have heard that before, haven't you? It comes from that story in Nehemiah. The joy of the Lord is be your strength. Is your, is your, are you running this life on empty? Are you running half full Christian? God says his joy is your strength and his joy comes from a yielded relationship with him. It comes from us loving the God who loved us. It comes from taking his word for us and applying it in our lives and that relationship, that walk, his presence brings joy. And e even when we have to say goodbye to somebody who is dear to us, we can experience and know a joy and a peace that passes understanding. I've got joy down in my heart, deep, deep down in my heart. And uh, that joy, God says, is supposed to, He wants it to fill us up and to overflow and bring Him glory and be a blessing to others. But I want you to understand th this is what God offers to us in this life. Can you imagine the life to come? It's hard to imagine, isn't it? But God does not want us to miss out on any of these things now. He wants you to know that fullness of joy. Please, Christian, talking to you, let God fill you up with his joy. It's there for you. Trust him. Trust him. Let's pray. Father, bless this word to our hearts and uh, thank you for our brother and his time and study and his relationship with you. Um, Father, um, 
Thank you for the promise.